Saturday morning and we are broadcasting live here from the 14th annual Wild and Scenic Film Festival. I'm Elisa Parker. I'm going to be hanging out with you all day with some extraordinary filmmakers, environmental activists, ICOM action heroes, and other special guests. And we're just delighted that you're hanging out with us here today. Uh, Wild and Scenic Film Festival is actually the largest environmental film fest of its kind. And we're based actually in downtown Nevada City. And we're also in Grass Valley this year as well. And to kick off the morning, I'm so excited to have, um, do you go by Jen or Jennifer? Jen is perfect. OK, Pate, <laughs> yep, right. right? So um, Jen Pate. And so first, welcome. Thank you. You came Thank all you the way much. from what, Toronto? From Toronto, Ontario, in Canada, yep. I have to say it was sunny here yesterday. We know, we saw no. it. <laughs> OK, the sun was here. That's OK. It beats minus 20 where I'm from, so it's fine. That's we're good. Perfect. We're getting <laughs> over a drought here in yes, California, so yeah. we're excited to have yeah, the rain. About it. It's OK. Mm -hmm. So tell us about Expeditionary. Yeah, so um, X Expedition was a mission basically across the Atlantic Ocean. We had a crew of 14 females. Um, sailors, activists, scientists, um, and I very fortunately got a chance to go on board as the filmmaker. Interestingly, I had never sailed before, so it was a completely uh, amazing adventure, one that I had no idea what to expect, which was probably for the best because, you know, baptism by fire, you kind of learn to do things on the go. It was my first ever solo uh, documentary. Wow, so, so first time selling. How many days were you on sea? 19 days. Okay, so you're yeah. on sea for 19 days yes. and this was your first documentary film. Yes. How did you uh, even, how did you even in, in to get the trust, enlist the trust from the crew, mm -hmm. and even saying, hey, I'll do this film. I've never done one before. Yeah. I've never sailed. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the whole, the whole base of the trip was a lot of trust in people that you didn't know. And for some reason, I mean, the ladies who set up X Expedition, they really did select an excellent crew. It was an amazing balance, a diverse mix of women, and everybody brought something completely different to the table. Yeah. Um, Tell and, us about the focus of it, too. Yeah, the so basically, of... it was a scientific research mission, and we were looking at plastics and toxics in the oceans, but also those in our own bodies. So um, quite a few people know that there's plastic out in the oceans, but what they don't know is that plastics actually act as sponges for toxics. And when they do, um, when they're ingested by fish, eventually they bioaccumulate up the food chain and make their way back to us. So what we wanted to do was really sort of get that dialogue out there, tell the story about the relationship between plastics and toxics, and get people acting on it through consumer choices, through petitions, and that kind of thing. Well, so, especially because, yeah. too, Jen, like, you had, there was an all-female crew. Yes. And, I mean, women control, like, 85% of what's bought and purchased anyway, so there's a lot of influence there. Absolutely. How did, how did that even come about and form to do it as an all-female crew in the first place? So, Emily Penn and Lucy Gilliam are both UK-based, and they met at a film festival actually I think or, or some kind of a conference and they sat down and they they both cared um, strongly about this issue Lucy coming from the toxic side and Emily coming from the plastic side um, and they're both amazing women in their own right all the women on board I mean I could have made an hour-long documentary about each of their lives yeah. and you know, you know and we have someone else here with us we too, do so one of my crew members is here too with me this week um, Katerina Fellini who lives in San Francisco but she's from Italy how come Katerina Katerina how come we didn't get you up here I know right <laughs> next time um, but really I think it was their their vision to sort of also highlight um, the strength of women, um, women in adventure, women in sailing, which are hugely underrepresented. Um, also women in STEAM subjects, so science, technology, engineering, mathematics, and also art. So it was really about sort of creating really positive female role models for young women out there who might be thinking, oh, I could never do that. Anything's possible. Anything's possible, That's totally. Right. So what? tell me about just your experience on sea. Like, what was one of the wildest things that happened while you were all out there? Um, we had a couple of different ones. I mean, I think the first week we had really unexpectedly bad weather. Like, it was awful. The first then, five what days. what are you thinking then? You're like out in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> Jen. Well, it's really great. I have, I have a, a high threshold for fear, so I don't get scared um, very easily. But we also, it's as I said, it's putting trust in your crew and knowing that you're going to get through it. And I mean, 
what, there's nothing better as a leveler for, for a crew and sort of team bonding than bad weather because everybody just has to take care of one another. Yeah. And so that was, and I think there was only a couple who actually didn't get seasick. Um, so that was quite a thing. I didn't expect to be seasick as long as I was. I was seasick for 11 days out of 19 because I was filming. Wow. Yeah, so when I had the camera here and then everything was moving and so it kind you of You mentioned like, that on the film. Yeah. And then also, what is it called? It's it called the bow, what broke? Something broke as well on the boat. Yeah, so the jib sheet. The um, jib sheet. Yeah. I'm gonna learn all about yeah, sailing. You right. learned all about I'm sailing still lingo. still learning. I know, and I recently bought my first boat um, on a whim. So it's, uh, you know, I think once you start to sail and you just fall in love with it. And what I think too is we're trying to encourage more women and just people in general to get into sailing, especially young people. And um, once you're out there, you know, you get addicted to it because yeah. it's a sense of freedom and it's, a, it's free, slow travel. And there's not enough slow travel in the world right now. What was, with all of these amazing women that you had aboard, what was one of the, as far as discoveries go, mm. you know, something that took you all by surprise, or even in tying in with your expedition, which I think I called expedition, but it's That's XX okay. expedition. I know, there's so many That's X's a good in word there, too. And it's just, yeah. We'll be talking about good words like all day. <laughs> but yeah, what was one of your discoveries that you really were surprised you know, in collecting plastic, for yeah. example, or analyzing the fish. <clears throat> Absolutely. I mean, obviously we went out there knowing that we were going to find plastic. Um, but I think what we were, as a group, shocked by in our first trawl, we found 50 pl pieces of plastic, which was just, you know, heartbreaking. Um, when you talk about troll, so you, I saw you had, it's almost it's, like this big net yeah, thing that follows a, the boat, right? It's basically a giant net. So it's called a manta trawl. And it kind of, the front of it looks like a manta ray. Um, and then it has a long trailing net behind it and it collects um, biota as well as plastics and anything else that's in there. And then we put it through a set of sieves and that's all in the film too. Um, but I think for most of us to find 50 pieces in our first trial was sort of heartbreaking. Um, but I think personally, I did water sampling for adventurers and scientists for conservation as well. Mm -hmm. um, and they're amazing. They're a, a US based initiative that's based on adventure and citizen science. So anybody can take samples for them. So I little shout out to them because they're doing amazing work. Um, and I sent off my, you know, I, I just took this bucket in the ocean and I put it in these bottles and I looked at them against the sky and they're see-through. There's nothing in there. You can't wow. see anything, right? Yeah. And then I sent in my samples after we got to land and I got them back, I think about six to eight weeks later. 536 pieces Gets of microplastic out. per liter. And you couldn't even see that with the visible eye. No, we couldn't see any. That's Those amazing. Were all pieces so this is just hanging invisible. out in the ocean. Like yeah. you said, it goes to the food chain. And you, right. obviously you saw that. And Diane, yeah. who was the scientist, Diana, yeah. was... No, she was... There's quite a few scientists on board. She, so. was, she was like a bio, fish... Diana is a, a... Yeah, so she's an ecotoxicologist and fish biologist. We also had Dr. Jenna Jambeck from the University of Georgia who's amazing. She actually, after we got back, published the first ever study that quantifies how much plastic is making its way into our oceans. Wow. So that's what I mean about the women on board, you know. I could have made so many films about just them and the work that they do. And I think that's one of the most amazing things that's come out of this is, you know, we're a family now. Yeah. And we, we all work all over the world, but we're a support network for one another. So whenever we're feeling, you know, a little bit overwhelmed by the situation, we just think of each other and it, and it shores us up. That's great. And also yeah. probably the great thing is that in addition to having the support team is that you can have a, a supported network, right? Because mm -hmm. all of you have different expertise and backgrounds. That's right. So now you have this really like a whole like knowledge pool yeah, that absolutely. can be there together. Um, and okay. Oh, is there a trailer for, are we asking about the trailer, Mark? Whenever you want to run. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so, um, also, okay, so one of the most shocking parts, and you know, we, uh, in seeing all of these films, and I've seen a lot of them now, mm -hmm. there's always something like that wow factor or the shocking factor yeah. in a lot of these films at Wow and Scenic. And you t mentioned that you guys did the test to see like how many of these toxic body chemicals, mm -hmm. body breakdown, and so tell us about the results. Yeah, so basically we were part of the UN Safe Planet campaign and they did this thing called body burden analysis. So what they do is they take your blood samples and then they basically do a test for 30 key indicator chemicals. Um, and that can be chemicals from anything. So one of the most common ones we found were PBDEs, so flame retardants. Yeah. Especially in North Americans because 
kids' pajamas. Pajamas. Clothing. Why does it need to be on our clothes? You Couches, know, pillows, mattresses. Absolutely. You know Arlene Bloom? Yes. Okay, that's her passion right. is to get rid of the, yeah. the fire retardants. So, I mean, it was really, um, we chose to go through our results on board so that we'd have time to sort of reflect on them alone and also with each other. Because when you're on the ocean, you are alone, right? So yeah. it's not, you're not being you know, um, affected by external um, thoughts or pressure or anything. You really are. You have this space to think. So we went through them, and they found 29 out of 30 key indicator wow. chemicals between the 14 of us, which is wow. pretty scary. Um, but, you know, education is the first step to awareness, and awareness breeds action. So for us, that was... a uh, uh, it was for me it was a game changer so talking about action what do you want to tell mm. everyone about like when we talk about the three takeaways and what they can do yeah. in relation to your passion and work around and around the film X expedition right. yeah so there's lots of things that people can do you know this is one of those issues that um, there are so many things you can do from from simple everyday things so not using products with microbeads in them which in the states just in a few banned, years they it? just were banned so in a few years they won't even be available but even now you can make the choice to not buy exfoliators or toothpaste with microbeads beads in them and also um, single-use plastics that's our big thing you know plastics an amazing product it was designed to last what it wasn't designed for was single use so yeah. just use it and throw it away and that's the kind of consumer society we're in nowadays so if people can find alternatives you know clean canteens instead of plastic water bottles don't go anywhere near plastic water bottles in general um, but then there's some bigger things that people can do so I mentioned adventurers and scientists for conservation they have a microplastics initiative that we contributed to um, so anybody can sign up and take water samples for them and it goes into a global data set. You get your information back and they even reimburse your postage cost of sending wow. the water. It's, they're awesome. So you, if anybody wants to do something, you know, themselves that's yeah. a little bit bigger than just making consumer choices, which are also, they're equally important, um, I'd, I'd direct them directly to them. And then even bigger than that is you can get involved with X Expedition. You know, we, um, we just had the second two X Expeditions, another crossing of the Atlantic, the South Atlantic. And then they also traveled around the northern part of South America. So those have been successfully completed. There's two legs in the Caribbean in February and March. Wow. They're still looking for women to sign up. So if anybody feels the anyone call. Wants to, if anyone, yeah. Yeah, if anybody feels the call, please sign up on www.xexpedition.com. So that's expedition with two X's. Um, and there's also, um, I'm leading an initiative in the Great Lakes because I live on the shoreline of Lake Huron. So next summer on the 20th of August, we're asking anybody and everyone, male, female, adult, child, to get involved in our initiative. And that's also on the expedition website, slash, forward slash Great Lakes 2016. That's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jen. No, Jen Pate so much, yeah. here at the Wild and Scenic Film Festival. Yeah. The film is called X Expedition. And when is it screening? It's screening today in the Tread Lightly section at the Miner's Foundry and it's second in that section so it's um yeah it'll be on at 12 30. that's fantastic thanks so much for being here thanks i know so you had issues me. with your flight i know you made it happen <laughs> we made it we make action important. oriented <laughs> we're gonna go to your trailer actually oh wonderful so you get a little sneak peek of this film i'm elisa parker and we will be right back with more guests here at the wild and scenic film fest media lounge thanks jen thanks so much yeah <laughs>